This is gonna be a deep dive on the back leg drive towards the target and what can actually be done as far as hip rotation and muscle activation to make you drive or to get you drive to the target faster. So with that said, let's analyze a couple pictures. Here with one of my favorite videos of Nolan Ryan, what we notice is that the back knee this back knee, this drive leg knee, is actually pointed probably towards the shortstop in this case, based on the angle, but the butt is facing us. You know, I'm looking at it from maybe the bat, close to the batter's box on the left-hand side, he's pretty far turned away from the target. So what's actually happened is his pelvis is rotated away from the target this way, and his knee then rotates a little bit that way, which gives him what we call hip internal rotation or rotation of the pelvis on the femur into internal rotation of the hip, which allows him to sit into that back hip as he drives forward. So it elastically loads the glute muscles and then he's gonna drive forward. As he drives forward, that hip goes into a little bit more external rotation, then a little bit more internal rotation, and then external rotation again. So as the pelvis opens, that femur externally rotates because the glute muscles are being elastically loaded. We'll talk more about that here in just a second, but it's gonna go from internal rotation as he drives forward once that pelvis opens or starts to open in combination with the back leg glute muscles and then this front foot hitting the ground and redirecting kinetic energy up the kinetic chain, that's gonna cause that pelvis to open even faster. So it's a combination of that front leg hitting, redirecting that kinetic energy in combination with that back glute. Now taking a look at one of our former athletes, now instructors, uh, you know, a guy who could pitch you know, pretty quick, you know, 93, 94 miles an hour. What we see through that back hip, and this is a guy without a ton of motion in his hips, um, just anatomically, is that he starts to drive down the mound, he maintains a hip hike of that front side slightly higher than the back side, even though he's moving down the mound. And this is very, um, similar to the way you might see Jacob deGrom move down the mound, which makes me think he might not have the most hip rotation either. But what you see is hip internal rotation as he starts to drive down the mound and abduct or bring his leg out. So that femur's rotating internally, loading those gluteal muscles elastically. So those glute muscles are controlling into what we call eccentrics, meaning they're contracting as they elongate and then they concentrically contract that pelvis is opening now his femur is in external rotation as he as he actually opens that pelvis this front leg is pushing back this way so because that front leg is pushing back this way it's redirecting kinetic energy up towards the arm that way and this leg is driving here and forward so we have kinetic energy moving from the back leg up and being and forward and being redirected from that front side coming up the kinetic chain, which allows that pelvis to fully open and that side to come forward. So what initiates that leg drive forward? And then at the same time, what allows him to display maximal power? So the pelvis can move on the femur just like the femur can move on the pelvis. So when you load away and you turn your body and load into this hip, the knee is going to point out, and although some people have attempted to say that that's hip external rotation because the knee's pointed out, it would be if my pelvis stayed straight forward this way, but my pelvis turns this way. And so the knee begins to turn out facing that direction because my pelvis turns closed. So it's a top-down rotation, meaning my pelvis initiates the rotation, then the leg ends up turning. So my pelvis turns this way on the femur, just like that, hip internal rotation. That's gonna elastically load the back of the hip. So as the pelvis loads, think of the glute muscles that attach across here, glute med, glute min. Now, the two gluteal muscles they really can do hip internal rotation. So as you go forward, glute minimus, and then the anterior part of the forward part of the glute medius drive me down into hip internal rotation as I go in combination with what happens down from the bottom. So it's top down and then it's bottom up. So what occurs down here at the foot is that the foot is actually gonna, and this model doesn't move real well, but this foot is gonna have a little bit of dorsiflexion where the bone's gonna come this way and it's gonna evert, meaning it's gonna kind of pronate and evert this way so that I can propel and push off of this foot down the mound forward. So I'm gonna drop in this way to drive forward. Now, when that occurs, what happens with 
eversion and pronation is the tibia starts to roll inward. When the tibia rolls inward and into this position, the femur rolls into this position. That causes my femur to roll here and then that causes my pelvis to open this way. So although I'm in internal rotation, internal rotation, as I hit that position towards the end of the throw where my front leg contacts and the pelvis starts to open, then I hit hip external rotation. So what's controlling that? What's slowing that rotation down or allowing me to hold myself closed for longer? If you're looking for the most comprehensive resource on training and rehabilitation of the throwing athlete, check out my book, Arm Alloy. The link is in the description. Now, back to the video. Well, it's my preload for sure, but then it's the glute control as I move down the mound. So I'm actually getting pronation or eversion down at the foot. I get a little bit of tibial internal rotation as I'm moving down the mound. Originally, tibial external rotation. So when I load, and then as I move down the mound, the tibia rotates in, it pulls the femur with it, and then that pulls the pelvis with it. But that's not just a passive movement. So a lot of individuals are you know, prescribing a big leg kick out this way, where they're kicking, and they're, start, they're starting in an everted position of the foot, and they're falling here like, like old school Tom Seaver, and they're doing this. But that's a passive movement, meaning gravity is just doing it. What's actually happening is, not only am I everting, pronating, internally rotating, but I'm driving through this back hip, through the glute min and the glute med on the back side, and then as I am moving down the back of the hip, the glute max, the posterior or the back fibers of the glute medius, and then the deep six hip external rotators are eccentrically, meaning lengthening as they contract, controlling that, controlling that, controlling it. As I get towards that end, boom, they start to elastically shorten or concentrically shorten to open my pelvis up to the target as fast as possible. And that has to happen in combination with what the arm is doing. So all things come into play when we consider this. How much hip internal rotation do you have? You know, do you have sufficient range internally? Do you have sufficient hip abduction? Do you have proper eversion of their back foot or do we need to pre-position your back foot? All things have to be considered with each individual athlete, but ultimately it comes down to how is your body built? The key principles are this. The hip is gonna initiate by moving closed from the target as I go forward. It's going to stay closed until I get to the point where I'm reaching close to my extent of abduction as these muscles are contracting as hard as possible, my foot starts to roll in because I'm running out of range and that rolling in of the foot, tibia, femur is going to help accelerate my pelvis forward and once this foot hits the floor, boom, it stops this side of the pelvis from moving that way and forces this side to move even faster. So, it, you know, it takes front leg stability as well as back leg stability to be able to hold that motion and then also range of motion. Just things to consider, maybe a little bit deeper dive explanation of what's actually happening from an anatomical perspective because these things do get complex. If you're interested in any of our content, you know, on mechanical analysis, check out some of those videos. If you want to get in touch with us, overheadathletics.com is the best way and we'll see you guys in the next video.